Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Matt here with Iraq Veteran 8888 and today we're in East Tennessee up in the mountains here at Spartan Hunting Preserve and we're going to be going after some huge hogs today. Hogzillas. Hogzillas. Some big big fatties. Oh yeah. We're bringing home the bacon I hope today. Proverbial bacon and literal. That's right. So we're out doing some hunting here today. Uh, it's been a little rainy, a little bit wet. Uh, but we're going to get out here and make it happen as best we can. Uh, good way to test the gear, I suppose. Absolutely. Right. So we're going to go over the gear a little bit real quick. Um, I'm running a Romanian PSL. This is a custom build from Chase at Definitive Arms. It's got some ironwood designs furniture on it. Texas weapons uh, top cover. We've got an Arkin 6 to 24 by 50. First focal plane optic mounted up. This is the SH4. Um, this particular one has an illuminated reticle, really solid. And one of the selling points about these optics is that they're very, very, you know, professional quality and upper end features, but for a very reasonable price, like sub $500 price range in some cases. This is the 6 to 24. The 4 to 16 might be a little bit better of a fit for this gun, but this is the one we had, so we thought we'd mount them up here and try them out. The barrel on this gun has been shortened. Matt here is running the Daniel Defense DD5 V4. This is the newest offering from Daniel Defense, so he's running 308. You got a SDN6 from AAC here, so you are running suppressor. That's right. And of course, he also has the 6 to 24 Arkin uh, on here. These optics been holding up good. We've been doing some torture testing, a little bit of range stuff with them, um, just trying to kind of see what they're all about. You know, a lot of folks been talking about them and everything, so we thought it'd be a really good opportunity to get out and do some hunting with these optics, see how they hold up. I'm real curious to you know use illuminated reticles. I do like that in a in a hunting environment yeah for sure and we're also sort of seeing like how 308 fares against 54 rimmed in terms of shooting hogs because it's, it's a lot of mass yeah you know and it's a big animal i'm, I'm very uh, interested to see how that turns out and yeah. see the results and we're not going after anything small no and we're going after some pretty big hogs here and i think the idea is that we're going to kind of spot and stalk and just see if we can you know see these big old hogs laying up anywhere or yep. or hanging out anywhere and we're going to sneak in there Yep. and we're gonna shoot them <laughs> so the, the guys seem to know what they're doing they let us know ahead of time you know where we're going to be going what to be, pre be prepared for they do have teeth so that is something we have to be wary of so um, hopefully everything goes well all right we're gonna creep in and let's see if we can come across anything all right all right i'm ready let's do it let's do it <laughs> All right, looks like Matt connected with a huge hog here. Now, um, this particular one, we're thinking, the, the guide is saying he's almost 500. I think he's about 400 on the hoof. I'll split the difference. 450. You think he's about 450? Hoof. That's right. So, it doesn't look like that 180 grain spear uh, went all the way through. Clean pass through. I mean, this is a really big animal. Yep. And they have really thick skin and, you know, just their composition, they're, they're really tough animals, you know. Oh yeah, grizzly. Yeah, very much so. Now, that's definitely one of the biggest boars I've ever seen before myself included i think we might be able to retrieve the lead on this one so yeah. maybe we'll we'll show that at the end yeah we'll see if we can recover the projectile but uh 
of course the DD doing a great job. Uh, I think we need to shoot one with the PSL. Let's do it. We're and gonna tear them up. Yeah. So this could really be a comparison of 308 and 762 by 54. You know, kind of uh, com block versus uh, you uh, know the good guys, right? <laughs> the, the age old battle. That's right. So we got a call on the radio, and uh, they're saying that they've seen a big old boar over the hill over here. So we're gonna just creep in nice and slow and quiet, and see if we can get a shot at them. So uh, let's go have a look. Good shot, Chad. Good shot. Wow. Dude. Daniel Defense doesn't mess around, man. She gets the job done. How about your backup pistol, man? Didn't have to break her out today. We didn't have anything running up on us. That's for up close and personal. Dang right, man. We don't want that. <laughs> well, they weren't kidding when they said that there were some hogs over the ridge line. We came over here and had a look and, uh, couple of nice hogs hanging out and uh, I, I would venture to guess this one's probably every bit of 500 on the hoof and uh, 54 rim did a good job out of PSL here of course Arkin uh, delivering the goods no problem when we saw this one hanging out Chad had an opportunity to creep around and we actually had another very large one probably about the same size as this one maybe a little smaller but we'll, we'll see all right that's a lot of food Bringing home the bacon. All right, so how'd you feel about the hog hunt? I think it went awesome. We got some hogzillas. Yes. Those things are monsters, man. Yes. Yeah, so the one that you crept up on, he was just kind of doing his thing, chilling, eating. Yep. They don't have very good eyesight. No, I guess that's what makes it uh, fun. You yeah. Can, you can get danger close. You can really you know? sneak up on them. They, yep. they don't have very good eyesight. They got decent noses. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of animals rely on their nose. But I guess when they got their face in corn, they, all they care about is eating. They, they don't yep. really view you as a threat as long as you're not being obvious that you're sneaking up on them. They're, they're pretty simple to sneak up on. A lot of the hog hunts that I've done where we've gone out to just random farms and stuff and just mm -hmm. look around and glass with thermals at night and stuff, um, you'll see them in, in big groups and everything. I think they call that a sounder. Ah. It's when you have all a bunch of hogs together, it's called a sounder. But you'll see a sounder of them and they're just all hanging out and you can just creep up and get up on a line. This is not so much, I've never really hunted hogs during the day. Yeah, it was Now I know that, you know, it's a relatively enclosed area, mm -hmm. but they are confined to like a thousand acres. Yeah. So it's not like you're not gonna find them in there somewhere, but you right. know, you just gotta spend a little time getting out and looking around. But mm -hmm. our guides were like, hey, we saw a couple of big bruisers coming along the hill over here. So we crept over there and had a look. And sure enough, a couple of real good shooters. I mean, the one I shot was, Easily over 500. Easily, I the think one that Chad six. shot. Yeah, that sucker had to have been five or six. Yep. Yours was the smallest, but still a hoss. So yeah. It was probably what four or five. I'd say about 450 on the hoof. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but I mean, you guys, both you and Chad, man, you guys got some bruisers. I've never seen hogs this big. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like I'm used to like Georgia hogs. You're talking maybe 200, 250. Yeah, you know, maxed out here. You see them and you're just like, is that real? It's 
Well, one, one realization I came up, um, up to as well is that a lot of people say that the smaller hogs are better eaten, but the guys here at the ranch told us that the larger hogs are actually better eating because yep. they have more marbling and fat content and they're not so mm -hmm. lean and it makes sense. So they said that those big 600 pounders are actually pretty good eating. Yep. So we, we, we've got a lot of meat to go through. Yep. And you know, we got a little bit of a sample here because part of what you get here at the lodge is you get your meals included and they have dedicated cooks and they're using the game meat that that's from the lodge and it tastes amazing they, it, they've got it down yep. to the sides here it was really good and I, I was really impressed at the you know the staff did a great job of taking care of us the accommodations are great the meals were great um, every part of this trip was exceeded my expectations by far really really good experience uh, we'll go back to the hunt real quick uh, comparing 308 to 762 by 54 rimmed, you know, mm -hmm. that 150 grain soft point in that 54R is a really impressive bullet. Um, it was interesting that the largest hog we shot, we actually took with 54R. Yep. And the projectile came to a rest just under the hide on the opposite shoulder. I got a really good shoulder shot. We recovered it. Too. And we, we did it. recover yeah. the projectile. And it, I was only, I, I crept up within 30, 35 yards. So it wasn't a very, you know, long shot. All the shots we were taking were pretty close because we were able to creep into these things. Right. Uh, the 308 again, you know, running the 168 grain spear. Not to say that it's not a good bullet, but you know, I we took a few rams on this trip as well, which you'll see in another video if you haven't already. But on the hogs, you know, it performed quite well, but not as good as I expected. Yeah, I, I just think maybe it was uh, the the wrong application for that particular round. I think there might be a better round for what we're hunting yeah. uh, in that caliber for sure. Well, one last thing worth noting too is I feel like when you're, when you're working with a hunting optic, I think having an illuminated reticle, reticle is pretty important. Um, I, you know, I probably would have preferred uh, the 4 to 16 version of that optic. The 6 to 24 is a little bit heavy of an optic to run uh, on these short shots we're going to be taking, but it ended up working out good. And uh, I'm a big proponent of that illuminated reticle. I feel like, especially in this weather it where it's overcast lot, yeah. and there's a lot of moisture in the air and it can be hard to see long distances and things can kind of blend in with each other in the mm -hmm. background when you have that haze in the air. So having that illuminated reticle, um, that's definitely a nice feature. I feel like that's an essential feature for a hunting optic, not just Arkin or, or any other you know company, right. but just as a hunting optic in general, I feel like having a illuminated reticle is kind of a nice thing to have. Well, it does, and it saves you. I mean, regardless if you're hunting during the day or even if you're doing just traditional whitetail at, in the evening, when you just want that, you just need that little bit more light to get that shot. That that deer just pokes his head out at the very last slot. You can just turn that little illuminated reticle on and it gives you just enough to take that shot. Yep. So it, it, I can totally see it helping. And it helped here because you're right, it was, it was raining and hazy and just foggy and it, it really did help out quite a bit. Yeah, man. Well, I really enjoyed this hunt. And again, a big thanks to the ranch here for taking care of this Spartan Hunting Preserve. That's right. Check them out up here in East Tennessee. Really, really great people. Awesome, awesome people. I cannot say good, enough good things about how well they took care of us and everything. So um, definitely want to thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. We have many more hunting videos on the way we're going to be doing. Uh, we hope that you'll enjoy those as well. But we're going to get out here and have fun. And we're always just trying to show off cool guns and cool gear and try, you know, uh, different types of loads and see you know which loads that do a really good job of taking down animals uh, in a humane fashion because uh, that's what it, it's all about as a hunter is you know you want to make a good clean kill and you want to be as humane as possible and, right. and minimize the amount of suffering that the animal is going to endure and you know obviously get in there and get some good food as well so uh, big thanks to you guys for watching today's video uh, big thank you to all of our patreon supporters you guys are amazing also go over to ballistic inc Pick yourself up some snazzy t-shirts if you want to support us directly. Uh, those are certainly ways that you can do so. Um, have yourselves a great day. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.